Okay, so now welcome to the webinar today. Well, today what I want to talk to you about, and this is mainly for the patients in homeopathy, is what the patient needs to actually observe within themselves for effective homeopathic treatment. And I want to share with you what I've learned and what I'm clinically applying. Why hasn't homeopathy worked for you? And I know many of you come to us and tell us that, well, homeopathy has worked for my uncle or my aunt or someone, but it hasn't worked for me. Why hasn't it worked for you? And how we can work? So, <clears throat> I want to take you right back to 1755. This is our, our grand old man. This is our guru. This is Dr. Samuel Hanuman. He is the person who discovered homeopathy. And the main idea of homeopathy are these three laws. The first law is the law of similar, which means that like cures like. The second law or the second idea is the idea of proving, which means that we have about 5,000, 7,000 homeopathic remedies, out of which we have to choose one for you. And when we say law of similars and like cures like, means that we need to find a remedy which matches your exact personality type, your nature, your temperament, your exact state. So, how do we work actually? I want to tell you that homeopathy actually, in today's words if you want to use, it actually works at immunological and hormonal level, which in previous years would be called as a life force or a vital force. But there is a connection between this immune state, this hormone state and the state of mind. There is an entire connection. So let's back, come back to the main thing. Why is homeopathy not working for you? And there's only one reason majorly. is not giving an exact case history. Somewhere down the line, maybe you haven't given a proper case history. A history at depth. You haven't told very, very minutest detail about yourself. So let us go over the different aspects in a case and what are the things that you could probably tell more to your homeopath who can help you further. So we start with the first thing, the chief complaints. <clears throat> so now patients often tell us that we have told everything doctor, Why do you to say? So I want to tell you that in homeopathy, very very minute details are important. What is happening? When it is happening? What increases it? For example, is it more in the day, more in the night, more aggravated by cold weather, more by warm? Whom it is happening to? Who is the person whom it is happening to? For example, one of the patients recently came to me and told me that, Doctor, I feel numb in my leg. I said, what do you mean by numb? I said, you know, in the ankle, I feel like a numb. I said, when do you feel it? He looked for a couple of minutes. He said, when I sit, I get this numb. Now, this is the depth we need to understand in homeopathy. So in homeopathy, we go in depth, study a software, we study a symptom, for example, numbness, ankle, sitting while, and one of the remedies there is naturalness. This is the exact symptom that's needed in homeopathy. So if you're going to tell about your chief complaint to your homeopath, you have to tell in depth from head to foot every single pinch, every single change that you find. Again, the homeopath is skilled here to actually observe from very, very, very small gestures of yours. Different patient sits in different way, you know. One patient will come and sit in a very nervous way, will get very restless. Another person will sit with a lot of ego. Another person will just be a little bit forward while sitting with showing a little bit of respect. Another one will, will have a lot of ego. So, very small gestures we observe in patient. This is very important for us and this is where the skill of the homeopath is important. Also the language. I want to tell you we have treated cases of cancer, of coma, of deaf and dumb. But it's not only what you talk, but sometimes how you talk which is important. The homeopath is actually skilled to read between lines. 
and this is something that uh, our great masters dr sankaran for example has worked a lot on understanding what the patient is saying more than what he is just talking going behind the words so this is where it's important for us to not just understand your situational symptoms but your basic basic symptoms what we call it as your your symptom which is at your deepest core level for example everyone gets nervous before exams do you know anyone who doesn't get everyone feels nervous before a marriage everyone feels stressed when his boss shouts at him what we need to understand is at a much much deeper level we need to understand what is called as the uncompensated state we often find this in childhood or in situation of crisis or especially in stress situation that's what i want to talk to you today about our motto in case taking is to know a particular person when patient is saying so many symptoms we are not interested only in the symptoms but what is the basic nature of the person even without the situation we often will go into the stressful situation what is the stress but we will not only understand trying to understand what is the feeling but also what is the coping mechanism for example i had a case he would tell me that i work with this particular boss of mine and he constantly insults me so i asked him what do you feel he said i feel very hurt i said okay so what do you do he said no every, i every day i go home and i say i leave but next day i come back again so this is the coping mechanism the coping mechanism is first wanting to go away and then saying okay let me try for some more time this is the basic basic coping mechanism that we even try to understand so when we ask describe the feeling tell more it's not only the feeling but we were also trying to see how you coped up with it what was your reaction childhood i know this when i ask patients describe your childhood a little bit more and they often laugh i want to tell you this is the most important thing i know so many cases where we have found the right remedy because of a very clear history of childhood patients tell us about very very deepest things about their childhood abuses some physical abuses that have happened some fears that have remained within and when they tell us they are not just reliving the past but they are giving us a window in their uncompensated in their subconscious state where homeopathy can be beautifully useful the dreams and fears are are very important as well i have spoken about this before about dreams and fears in my other uh, videos but it's it's a window to the subconscious level the other thing that i have not spoken so much about but very important is interest and hobbies the interest and hobbies is very interesting is something that takes you kind of away from the situation which affects you the most so you will often see that people actually try to find their their life they make their life in such a way in which they are comfortable you will often find a person who is who loves traveling to to be in a field where traveling is a main thing for example uh, a guide a tourist guide for example you will often see people who who like to who, who who like the stage to be in be in a kind of they make their life in such a way that they will find situations where they like to be on stage i remember this particular case a case of arthritis and i asked him what do you like to do he says you know i just love traveling I said why do you like traveling he said i i like to go to different parts of india stay with the adivasis i said why do you want to stay with the adivasis he said when i go to different areas and and i meet adivasis i like to make deeper contact with their culture i like to live with them understand their language and this was his basic state where his main symptom was communication he wanted to communicate with everyone make connection make bonds and that helped us to find the remedy for it this is where for a homeopath just one more deeper symptom you give and he might find the key for your case the other thing that often patients are unable to tell us or maybe they are unable to share with us is the life space and relationship often 
if the patient is able to share the their version is important it's not what is your relationship with your parents or spouse or relatives or work schedule so it is how how do you look at it like for example some people i know this patient who tells me that my relationship with my mother is like a restriction now this is not not something that that is like common so this kind of very 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 intricate details about you will help us because what we are trying to do is we are also trying to understand how much has your mental emotional growth happened as a person lifestyle what kind of lifestyle the person likes i know this person who who likes to go to different different hotels and just steal uh the uh the folks or spoon this particular small detail say you know i am i am a millionaire but i like to go and just take it this helps us to find the remedy and that this particular symptom that the patient say helps to find uh the remedy for his eczema detailing it's not a, not enough for us if you tell us that i am a nice person i am a ni- i am a good person or i am angry or i am shy we need to know more deeper aspects what happens when you get angry do your heart tremble does your hair stand up do you feel chilly somewhere when you feel angry so we like to know very very detailed symptoms in there we will also try to understand and take observations from people around you sometimes from your relatives sometimes from your spouse not just that we even see how you react in the reception how you talk to the receptionist how you talk to other patients outside how the appointment was taken this also shows the personality trait isn't it often when you develop a cough cold coryza fever diarrhea when you develop acute problem your real state comes out and you should contact your homeopath during that time couple of more things that i feel are are essential which which if you share will will help us is the past history of illness we need to exactly know what are the illnesses that have happened in the past and what happened there and what aggravated or ameliorated those situations for example one patient told me that i used to get recurrent tonsillitis and after that i just removed the tonsil and after i removed the tonsil i started developing arthritis and this is very important history for us because there is a relation between removing a tonsil and starting arthritis it means that tonsils has lymph has glands in it and when you remove that your immune system goes down so this this is important this kind of childhood history this kind of different operations you have had recurrent illnesses you have had it's important for you to tell us also the history of allopathic medicines whether you had any side effects with allopathic medicine whether we know of cases where patients have started the symptom due to allopathic medicines so knowing this helps us family history we have so many times seen where there is a history of cancer in the family the patient developing certain symptoms like or of as if there is a little hereditary issues of tuberculosis paralysis diabetes syphilis gonorrhea so family history is very important for us we want to know what goes on in your mind when you are not doing anything very often i ask what what goes on in your mind when you are not doing anything and they are like okay i am on the phone okay i don't know so we are trying to remove you from from your voluntary state of mind we want to understand what actually goes on in your subconscious state complete exact details so few suggestions to me that i want to tell you put your mind off when you are giving the cases to me trust the homeopath trust the process is going you feel experience don't try to by heart points and come and tell us one by other just be there go with the flow trust the process homeopathy and homeopathic medicines are the most effective and most classical medicines in the world even mahatma gandhi has said homeopathy cures large percentage of cases than any other method of treatment it is beyond all doubt safer economical and most complete medical science so has swami vivekananda he says an allopath comes and treats cholera patient and gives them his medicine so homeopath comes and gives his medicine 
and cure perhaps more than the allopath does because homeopath does not disturb the patient but allows nature to deal with them i couldn't tell more than what swami vivekanand has said so coming back to finally if homeopathy hasn't helped you look back at your history and tell all the different points that you may not have said to the homeopath from head to foot from past till now from childhood till now tell as much as possible in depth and i believe the homeopath will do its best to help you so you can write to me this is my email id for any queries any thoughts feedbacks